Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Well, good news this noon. Those morning rain showers pushing out of Metro Detroit, but the clouds and the wind, that's here to stay. The question now, any more severe weather on the horizon? Well, we certainly would like a little more sunshine. Right? You know? You know, I was noticing this morning how just amazingly hot it was <laughs> compared to, and not hot, 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 right? But, but for honestly, the first time, yeah. I could stand outside without a jacket In for the morning show. Right. At 5 I know. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's just been increasingly muggy. That stuck mm -hmm. with us last night into this morning. The good news, Rhonda and Nick, we will see a cool down on the way, especially once we get this frontal boundary through here as we work into this afternoon. Exact track 40 radar this morning heading into the lunchtime hour. The rain showers moving out of the region. Exact track 40, a clean sweep, and I think we will keep the dry weather around as we head throughout the rest of our day. Tower cam over downtown Detroit. Here's that sunshine, but we've got some cloud cover sticking around with it. Most everybody already above that 80 degree mark. 84 heading into lunchtime here in downtown Detroit. 80 up in Howell, 81 in Pontiac, and 83 working down into Monroe. Our dew point, that measure of the moisture content of the atmosphere, still well above 60, so it is still feeling very much summer-like out side. We will see those numbers drop as we go through late this afternoon and into this evening. Any rain showers pulling off to the east, but we're still holding on to some of that cloud cover off over western Michigan working into Lake Michigan. But as high pressure builds in behind the frontal boundary, I do think we go mostly sunny through the afternoon. Maybe an isolated thunderstorm here, but I do think most everyone stays dry. We're into the 80s heading into this afternoon. With that dry weather moving in, we do have some rain shower chances heading into the end of the week for the holiday weekend. I'll break down when the umbrella comes in handy. Your complete full one forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Brian, thank you. A woman had to have a tourniquet put on her leg after she was shot while walking on the side of the road. This happened last night just after 10 o'clock at the intersection of Collinson and David in East Point. Police say the woman was walking with a man when a driver nearly hit them when they went through the stop sign. The man shouted at the car and the driver turned around. And then somebody fired shots from the car, hitting the woman twice in her leg. Police are looking for a dark sedan. Anybody with information asked to call the East Point Police Department. A teenager was arrested after he pointed a gun at another driver during a road rage incident. It happened shortly after 9 o'clock last night along I-75 in Frenchtown Township. Police say 19-year-old from Newport got into an exchange with another driver, and the teen pointed a handgun at that person several times. The other driver called police, and the teen was taken into custody. He's now being charged with felonious assault and carrying a concealed firearm. A Macomb County man is now in jail, accused of being a child predator. Police say 35-year-old Derek Glenn sent graphic images of himself to an online social media group that poses as young girls to catch child predators. The online group then contacted police who arrested Glenn. He is facing several charges, including child sexually abusive activity, which is a 20-year felony. President Joe Biden has just canceled another $7.7 billion in student loan debt. The relief goes to certain borrowers who receive public service loan forgiveness, like teachers, nurses, and law enforcement officials. The debt relief also applies to some borrowers signed up for the saving on a valuable education or save plan, as well as borrowers who are receiving relief because of adjustments to income-driven repayment. And we have learned in the past few hours that the United States Senate debate at the M Mackinac Policy Conference has now been canceled. The organizers are saying leading candidates, Republican Mike Rogers and Democrat Representative Alyssa Slotkin, have declined to participate. The conference runs from May 28th until May 31st, of course, on Mackinac Island. Well, happening today, a meeting is taking place in Ferndale to discuss the new bike lanes along Woodward. The meeting is happening at 6 o'clock tonight at City Hall. Officials plan to host other meetings this summer as well. And Indot is hosting an open house where anyone here in Michigan will have the chance to explain what they want to see in the future for I-75 at 8 Mile, that interchange there between Detroit and Hazel Park. It's happening at Nolan Elementary Middle School in the gymnasium from 5 until 7 p.m. tonight. Business owners, residents, community stakeholders are all invited to attend. Have you ever driven that 
Wentz area. It's, yeah, Wentz. It's, a it's little, interesting. It's a little much, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you can probably simplify it a little bit. Right. Uh, Michigan State Police are recruiting, and they are working hard to find the perfect candidates for multiple positions. In fact, a lot of positions are available. That's right, folks. As young as 18 can apply as long as they have a high school degree. Competitive salaries and benefits are included, and there are opportunities for promotion. Our Kim DeGiulio spoke with Colonel James Grady the second about what applicants can expect. We don't just write tickets. Every trooper is an investigator. I like to call us a, a jack all trade, so to speak. We have community service troopers. We have troopers that are working plain clothes or working undercover. We have troopers that are flying helicopters here in the MSP, and we train you to do that. Well, if you are interested in working with the MSP, we have a link to the application on our website, which, of course, is clickondetroit.com. The Biden administration is pushing back against a move from three European countries to recognize a Palestinian state. That comes as one relief agency says that it has run out of food for Rafa. Ross Sanchez has the latest. With no sign Israel's military offensive in Rafah is slowing, the UN overnight suspending food distribution in southern Gaza, saying it's short on supplies and it's just too dangerous. While in the north, the Pentagon also updating on that floating pier built by the U.S. military, saying that so far, none of the aid delivered through it has reached hungry residents. It comes after the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court accused Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of deliberately starving the people of Gaza, an allegation he denied to MSNBC's Stephanie Rule. We've enabled airdrops, we've enabled maritime routes, we're building a port. The whole thing of a deliberate starvation policy is ridiculous. Israel also pushing back against a dramatic move overnight by three of the U.S.'s European allies, who say they're recognizing an independent Palestinian state. Ireland, Norway and Spain saying peace can only come through a two-state solution. Israel's foreign ministry calling the move a gift to Hamas and Iran and recalling its ambassadors. And as tension increases abroad, internally, Israel seizing camera equipment from the Associated Press, a U.S. news agency, only to back down after pressure from the White House. The Israeli government said AP footage of Gaza was being used by Al Jazeera, which is now banned in Israel. Three years ago, in the last Gaza war, Israel bombed an office building used by both the AP and Al Jazeera, saying Hamas was operating out of it. That was Ross Sanchez reporting. The United Nations General Assembly has previously voted in favor of granting the state, the state of Palestine, full membership in the U.N. However, the U.S. rejected Palestine's bid for membership during the Security Council vote in April. We have much more ahead here on Local 4 News at noon. We sure do, including a look at the devastation left behind after a tornado ripped through the heart of Iowa. See how they are dealing with the aftermath there. Plus, here's Bree Jackson. Testimony is over in former President Trump's hush money trial with Trump not taking the witness stand. I'm Bree Jackson in Washington with the next steps in this case. And before we head to break, don't forget about our big Go For It event tomorrow. It's a unique one. We are retiring worn or damaged American flags. It's taking place tomorrow at the Shelby Township Veterans Memorial from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We are collecting your worn flags. Each one will be given to veterans and Scouting of America for an official retirement ceremony.